church as a team praying with her as well. Um, uh, the tumor now is going down to six centimeter. It was seven. So uh, God's doing something. I don't know what that is, but there's a good news. Amen. Yes. Remember, Amen. God is doing something good. Come on. Um, um, she's very brave. She, uh, her mom is there with her, a lot of family member relatives. So tonight, it's 10 o'clock p.m. If you are able to, you can just, you know, get with your friend and pray for her going through the surgery. It's not a major, major surgery per se. It's one of the best uh, surgeon in the world with the best robotic instrument. So very small incision. So uh, those are the good things. Um, so, but we, we keep praying for her in the name of Jesus. She's going to make whole after this. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, so, um, and uh, we like to be able to help her financially. She doesn't have the medical insurance here in the U.S., so she made a decision flying back, and it was the right decision. All right. Uh, the surgery cost about uh, sixteen thousand U.S. dollars. Sixteen, you know, about a car, right? About about Honda Civic. No, 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 Honda Accord. So basically, but if if she could have done it here, it's ten times. Yes. So we actually have to pray for this nation's medical care system. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so um, uh, it's sixteen thousand dollars. So as a church, you know, if you are willing to help her, um, shall we? we are we do, going to collect some special offering today? Uh, is Ming here? Do we have the envelope? Okay. So if you if you are willing to help Jennifer, um, when you give checks, you can still put Agape House, so you can get some of the tax return. But you can put a small no say for. She put it like, just not a name, put it in Mercy. Can you put this to name? Mercy, M-E-R-C-Y. Mercy, can you do that? Mercy, we'll put in the Mercy Ministry, and all the money, if you put the Mercy now, will all go to Jennifer for her medical expenses, amen? Can we do this next week? Yeah, we'll do two weeks. So today, uh, there's an envelope there. If you give, um, you put, if you, on your check, is there a Mercy? Let me see. There's some Okay. Yeah, there's a compassion fund. Oh, sorry, do you see the compassion fund here? All right, so you can check compassion fund and say you put, say, $1 here, just an example. You can say 80 cents go to compassion fund for Jennifer. Is that all right? All right. Don't put on your check. Put on your envelope. Mm -hmm. Okay, amen? So can we lift your hand and pray for the envelope right now for the medical expense? Because she didn't want to go to go a surgery. I say, go, girl, don't. Money we can always earn, amen? Mm -hmm. But our body, all right, let's pray. You put your hand here. Lord, we bless Jennifer with the mercy fund, what we call it compassion fund. In the name of Jesus, every penny will be paid. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen? amen. Hallelujah. Um, we have visitors, welcome. Um, this is the church. We uh, just come here at the beginning of this year. And the first of all, I want to give thanks to uh, Paul and me. You know, this is a wonderful facility, isn't it? Yes. Amen? Yes. And you guys nod your head, but we uh, passed through August, the hot summer, <laughs> and no problem. Tell me about no problem. No problem. Amen. No. This is a church we don't get air conditioning on Sunday. Amen? <laughs> <laughs> and we always say hallelujah. <laughs> And look at now, we are going to the fall. How about the weather? Yeah, amen? amen. Keep thanksgiving to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Folks, we have to learn how to appreciate, you know. Can we thank God for this facility right now? Come on. Amen. Thank you, God. This is wonderful. Look at which church got all the courtyard and <laughs> the elegant stairway. Don't go up. <laughs> we have a, like a, a CEO room <laughs> and we have a wonderful gallery here. And the atrium is like a what classic British English uh, country, you know, cottage. Wonderful. So after church, find your friend, go out, bring some sports equipment, do some sports, throw some football there. Let's make this a family Sunday, amen. A real, real family Sunday, amen. Turn it a family Sunday. Hallelujah. Today I'm going to go through the fight. We have been going through the Bible. And I'm staying on the book of Philippians, and it's a wonderful book. 
Given what's going on right now, I believe we need a book. Last week, we talked about the joy of the Lord is my strength. Tell me never, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Have you experienced the joy of the Lord last week? Yes. Yes? yes. When you try, like, uh. I almost turned into a grumpy old man. <laughs> and the Lord gave me this message. He transformed me. I tried, when I want to be grumpy, I say, the joy of the Lord is my Amen. I hope that blessed you last week. And there are 15 times in the book, Paul, very short book, Paul kept talking about joy, joy, rejoy, joy. Have you been talking about joy and rejoice last week? Yeah. If you have read, read your hand back at me, like joyful people, or my, my mother-in-law, Nancy, did you speak joy to Peter last week more? 15 times? <laughs> Oh, more than usual. Amen. If you are, are becoming more joyful, more than usual, that's a good thing. And remember, Paul wrote this book when, while he was in Chen. So this is a particular, we call it a uh, prison episodes, which is those books that he wrote when he was in Chen in Rome and for Jesus Christ. And it was not easy. And he wrote this filled with joy. So uh, anyone named Joy or Joy is here, raise your name. Joy, joy. Just one? Joy? Joy. Oh, okay. So, if you have a middle name, make it Joy. <laughs> Is that a male form of Joy? No. See? What? Joy. Joy. <laughs> oh, your daughter is Joy. We have two Joy. She should come. Amen. So, hallelujah. Joy. If you have somebody fellowship with you, in partnership with you, even that person doesn't look so smart. <laughs> be joyful. <laughs> what does it matter? I preach about the deliverance. This joy will be our deliverance. Never give up. We talk about that unity. The unity among children bring the best blessing to parents. Being poured out. Safeguard yourself. Come, it's a command from the Lord. And we have to con contend about who we are. So we talked about that last week. You can check our website with a message. I believe... It's a timely message for you and me right now this season. But today, um, I want to push a little bit more. And this is a message to my heart as well. And I believe through this book, I pray God is going to speak to your heart. Amen? So can we pray? You can put your hands on your heart and pray with me. Lord, bless my heart. Open my ear so I can hear you and obey you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And this is a book, you can see, as we introduced last week, this book is not like other Paul's book, especially other books are written in a very logical sense, one after another, thought after another thought, logical thinking, you know, you know, consequential arguments, everything. And those are the things, especially Asian people love to argue, to study about. This book, Philippians, is a very tough book to study. If you are too logical, tell never too logical. <laughs> because when you read this book, there's no logic to it. <laughs> After a while, and Paul just said, rejoin. After he says something, boom, joy. <laughs> And after he says something, boom, rejoice! You can see that it's a blip of di di different thinkings. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven different thinking, blips of thinking in him. And he's overtaken by his joy with his church, his fellowship with his church, his memory about this group of people that he served and filled with him, with all the joy in him. But in the middle of all this, there is a song. Tell your neighbor a song. A song. One more time, a song. A song. It's in chapter 2. This puzzled the best scholar, Bible scholar for centuries. It puzzles Chinese Bible study group for centuries. Why there is a song in the middle of a New Testament book? Are you puzzled? If you are writing a book, and later on will be called the textbook in the seminary, 
Will you write a song in that book? When I'm writing my PhD thesis, it's this thick. Can you find a song in my PhD thesis? Zip. Huh? Maybe a preface. Yeah, preface. I put a, a song there. In the thesis, YK writes tons of paper. Do you ever put a song in one of the um, OFC deadline paper? No, I will get rejected. <laughs> you will get rejected. <laughs> you are not serious. You're, would you put a song in one of your most important work? Yes. In the middle of this book, a song. A song. I'm puzzled. I'm puzzled. If you are too logical today, you would be puzzled too. Folks, in your life, do you have a song? When we face the end of our life, the last breath that we take, when you look back all the years, 120 years of life, do you have a, do you have a song? This nation has a song. Yes? Yeah. United States of America has a song. What is it? Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that I say a wretch like me. This nation has a song. No matter how you look at the politicians saying things, we got a song anchor for this nation, amen? amen. I want what lost. lost, but now and found what blind, but now I see. Does Chinese people have a song? There's one called Long the Chuan Ren. <laughs> Our song usually is a minor tone, right? Very sad, filled with suffering. Like, oh. Our instrumentation is like music, it's like. Do you have a song? Do one people group have a song? Just like this one. When I look at it, I start to puzzle. Why there's a song in the book, middle of this book? And you could see every thought that Paul tried to write kind of centered around this song. It's chapter 2, verse 6 to 11. Only six or five verses. That's a key to his faith. And I pray today, you will have a song in you. Amen? And your family. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Do your family have a song? When you get together very happy, what kind of song you play? Christians. Christians. <laughs> Thank you, Gear. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and I have a family, not Christians, when they get very happy, they play a song. Who gets the dogs out? Ooh, ooh, ooh. I have no idea. You know, because they only get the dogs out. Nobody only get the dogs out when they are happy. So they play the song and they say, the youngest one, Zach, get the dogs out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do your family have a song? <laughs> a song. Tell them one more time, a song. A song. A song. And, and we have to get back to Bible to study why Paul put a song in the middle of the book of Philippians. And the story lies in the fact, in Acts chapter 15 to 18, it's in Paul's second missionary journeys. And when he embarked on these journeys, he started to have a very different experiences. And this experience I'm going to preach about today. And very, very crucial to how, why he put a song in the middle of his writing. He did this in a couple places. Romans the same way. 
um, uh, Colossians the same way. But this one's very particular. So there are Bible scholars actually, I see them writing their PhD thesis to use this particular one to write their thesis. I say, don't do that. You don't need to understand. It's not written for the theology. <laughs> It's written because it's more than theology, amen? It's his bibliography. It's who he is inside. And it's part of the song. Do you have a song today? If you don't, after the end of today's sermon and message, I pray you go back and God's going to give you a song, amen? amen? When you go up, you have a song. When you go down, you have a song. When you are happy, you have a song. When you are sad, you have a song in you. Amen? The song is going to be there for you, from your Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. In the second missionary journey, you can see in the Bible, the background, give you a three-minute background. Church down with Jerusalem, mostly Jewish people. And at this point, you know, Peter was the head of church in Jerusalem with the council. Most of the people there are Jewish uh, people and uh, at this point of the church history because of Pentecost there were so many people coming from all over the world and they were filled with Holy Spirit went, went back some of them went north as far as to a place called Antioch anybody can see Antioch right here and, and Antioch is the first I would say Gentile church tell them Gentile church and they start to do something that's very different from the Jerusalem church they start to make, take very serious about the Great Commission. It's a mission. Tell them a mission. Mission. And Antioch, they are prophets, they are teachers, they are Paul and Barnabas and other people. They get together and pray. Touch your neighbor's shoulder and say, pray. Come on. Left and right. Pray. You come here 1040 and pray. And when they pray, the Holy Spirit spoke to them and sent them out to embark some kind of a mission. Otherwise, we may not have the gospel today. Amen? <laughs> we may have to go through circumcision like Jewish people. Here, how about that? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, hallelujah. So Antioch totally transformed the church. But there was division. There, you know, every time when God starts to move in the church, it's never smooth. You know, I do believe God is beginning to move in this nation. Amen? And God's beginning to move in this church, amen? Yeah. God's beginning to move in your family. Yeah. And when this God starts to move, in this particular case, Jerusalem church has some problem with the Gentile. So they must have a council meeting. Remember that one? To determine, yes, Gentile, you can worship God as well. But as long as you don't do this following thing, you are part of our family. And even in the mission team in Antioch, there was conflict. You know who is against who? Paul has some difficulty with Barnabas. You know what happened? They fought against a little young guy. So they split. So this is a very crucial moment. Church is moving forward. God's moving. But there's division, there's problem, and there's argument. There's a split in church. Folks, when God is about to bless you and me, sometimes we face division. Split argument. Are you with me on this one? That's right. When you have that in your family and your life, don't ever say, God, you are not blessing me. Those are the signs. Because God is moving in your life. Amen? Mm -hmm. Do you have some argument recently? <laughs> Did you have some big fight with somebody you love that's supposed to move together with you? Don't get bothered by those arguments. Even split. Paul and his partner Barnabas actually split up. But they are not fighting against it. Later on, they come together. Amen? But for a purpose. Amen? Sometimes to separate is to, to gain. That's something I want to say to you right now. Do not be bothered. I, I think this is for one of you. Do not be bothered be the one who left you because he or she will come back. Amen? In God's timing. Hallelujah. Amen. So, so this is the time God wants to move his gospel from Asia, Asia Minor, where Paul, the first missionary trip, took and moved into Europe. Tell me about Europe. Europe. So this is underlying God's plan. We look at 
this map right now, we understand. But Paul did not know. Church in Antioch did not know. Church in Jerusalem did not know. The life goes on. So this is a very important part. Folks, God's gospel is about to move to Europe. But you guys didn't get the, the importance of this statement. Let me try it again. God's gospel is about to move to Europe. You know, if God's gospel did not move to Europe, do you know what's going to happen? What? There's no... There's, there's probably not coming to England. And the Mayflower may not even exist. And we don't even have this nation, amen? <laughs> you see that? In Agape House, we pray. And we put so much emphasis on the mission, amen? There are people coming in and say, Pastor, I'm sorry. I, um, this is too much of mission for me. <laughs> you talk about mission every Sunday. But I have a good news for you. Right now, our mission have a local place in northern Philly. Amen? From Step. as a poorest neighborhood. And this is still in my heart, in our hearts. We went there to help those families in need. Actually, we've been helped the most. I mean, I was encouraged most when I went there. It's right here, 45 minutes of drive. God already take, also take our connection with John Henry, who is in Ocean City, New Jersey. His heart is for global students. His great connection for South America. And we connect with him, and we're still in contact with him. You, you guys just visit a visitor, right? Summer, and they say hi to each of you. If you have a heart, if you spe speak Spanish, anybody? <laughs> If you want to work with campus students, John Henry is our connection. God wants to move through him. And Akabe House is connecting and endorsing his ministry. Amen? And now God moves us to southwest part of China. Amen? We've been to one place, which is Tibetan Buddhist area, for three years. You guys been there. We have tried to keep going there every week, every year. So we call this a, a, a Uncle Jay place. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's, it's a wonderful place. Our young people go there and do uh, farming work. What else you guys do this, this summer? Yeah, painting and cooking for them. Wonderful, wonderful trip. And this is part where God's moving. As a church, we, we put our heart into their place with them. And now God opened another place around Dali area. We do the summer camps. And, and after we come back, God started to open up connection in Taiwan for the Taipei station. And we're working with a pastor and a, a wonderful young man there working uh, for the young people. And also, I will in Shanghai. Amen? You say, Pastor, are you crazy? Your church is small. <laughs> no, shall we remind me, you know, and... Uh, no, I have a, a Mini Cooper. I always say it's small, but it's mighty, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, we're going to change the, 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 the slogan for the church. So I always say, we, we should say, we are growing and we are mighty. Come on. Yeah, Try that. Growing, we are mighty. One more time. We are, we are growing, growing and we are mighty. Or oh, we say another, we are increasing and we are mighty. Come on. We are increasing. Increasing. We are mighty. One more time. We are increasing. We are mighty, amen? We are mighty. So Antioch Church was not big. It's probably our size too because they are under persecution. It could be very big, couldn't be very big, but already sent out the best of the people for mission, amen? This is the church we send the best people out for mission. Hallelujah. So when they go to, from Asia, Holy Spirit spoke to them again. The, the Bible said the Spirit of Jesus spoke to them. He said only tiny Bible. He said the Spirit of Jesus. So it's very clear. Jesus spoke to them in a form of a human form. Jesus showed up. Not just a kind of impression, type of, you know, God speaking to you. It's actually Jesus showed up to them in person and said, Go 
go you know, to Macedonia, which is in, in Europe. So they went. As I mentioned, they start with the separation between these two best teammates. Folks, you know, if you come to Agape House, and you have to, because of certain things God called you to do, do not be afraid, come to me and say, Pastor, I feel God leave me here for a while, but I have to go. I'll bless you and send you, amen? So, never let leaving a church become a burning or bridge, amen? Always explain how God leads you, and we'll bless each other, continue to work together in kingdom, amen? Yeah. Can we have that practice in the church? Hallelujah. Yeah. And the second one, Paul and Silas go to uh, Syria, which is an uh, Asia minor, and cities to help the church they established in the first mission. But at the midnight, uh, in the vision, Paul received a call from the men in Macedonia for help them. Paul and Silas go to Philippi, his major city. That's where the Church of Philippines started. Amen? And we go into that history. Paul preached to a lady called Lydia. Now, if Paul's strategy go to a place, he will find a Jewish gathering called Synagogue, where there must be a group of Jewish worshippers get together. But he couldn't find one. Do you know why? Because according to Jewish law, they need 10 men to commit to a synagogue to have a real congregation. 10 men. So there was no 10 men in the city of Philippi. Philippi. So, you know, end up Paul finding a group of women praying by the riverside. Now, when I look at Agape House, can I find 10 men, 10 families coming to this church? That's what I'm going to pray, amen? So, God found Lydia and prayed with her and preached to her and her whole family was saved and baptized. And Lydia is a woman, a businesswoman. Tell me about businesswoman. Business One more time, businesswoman. Business so this church, if you are in business and you are a woman, you are come to the right place. <laughs> Lydia's job is selling the purple clothes. Purple clothes. It's one of the most precious uh, goods in, in Asia to Europe because of the color. You know, purple is a very precious dye, the color. So she is a very smart businessman. Some of you folks, you will, as I preached from the last couple of weeks, you and I will be a shrewd businessman and woman for God. Amen? For the mission. And something God's going to do in the church. Okay. And finally, what happened is, you know, there was a girl who was filled with the, the evil spirit, but she has a special ability. You know, like today's all the, how do you call this movies? What are those movies? Like those human beings are equipped with supernatural power. What are those? Superheroes. superheroes. <laughs> superheroes. <laughs> there was a superhero girl, a teenager girl, I believe. She could see the future. So, so her master made a lot of profit because she is prophesying over people. Right? So use her as a game. A business. And she followed Paul around and Silas around and said, These servants, they are coming from the most high God. You have to listen to them. Is that is that a good thing? Yeah. Yes. Do you think the good thing? Mm -hmm. And Paul did not stop her. Paul just let her to just kind of testify, you know, give testimony. But one day, somehow, some way, Paul turned around and told the girl, say, No, you have to de be delivered from the evil spirit. So he cast out the demons, amen? And the girl was set free. You know what happened after that? No superhero anymore. Her boss is not happy. You know? And her boss just sent in and started to get a riot and all that. And the rest is the history. And uh, so Paul um, was locked up and chained in the dungeon. That's in Acts chapter 16, 20 to 24. The crowd joined in attack against Paul and Silas, and the masters ordered them to be stripped and beaten 
with rocks. So they were both, both beaten and continued. After they had been severely flogged, you know what I mean? Wow. They were thrown in prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. That's where the story comes from. When he received these orders, the jailer, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stock. This is what happened. They get beaten up. They get put into the inner cell in the prison. And their feet are locked up like that. How about that? That's Paul and Silas. Have you ever been in this position? No? Wow. There's no court. There's no hearings. There's no, no solution for this. Put into the dungeon. Anybody know what happened next? They pick up their cell phone and text the lawyer. <laughs> Free consultation. Free consultation. <laughs> In the dungeon, beaten up for the sake of Christ. And the next, you will know why there's a song in the book of Philippians. About Mena, tell them about Mena. Amen. Paul and Silas were praying and singing. Tell them to pray and sing. Singing. Pray and sing. Hymns to God. And the other prisoners were Listen. listening to them. Let me try it again. About midnight, Paul and Silas were pray. Pray. And Amen. hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. Wow. They didn't complain. They didn't grumble. They didn't like murmur. They didn't like, oh. <laughs> they didn't like, oh Lord, look at what you've done for me. I preach, I help, but now you put me into dungeon. <laughs> Suddenly there was such a what? Violent wow. earthquake. That the foundation of prison were shaken. At once all the prison door flew open and everyone chains came loose. But at midnight, tell them at midnight. Midnight. If you are going through something like midnight, you know what midnight means. It's dark, it's deep in the night. It's just total darkness. Dungeon, they don't have any candles. Total darkness. You feel sad, you feel tired, and your, your wounds just hurting, and you couldn't sleep, you know? What would you do at that, at that point? What would you do? What do you do? Pray. <laughs> Would you pray? They didn't just pray. They pray and singing. Singing. praying and singing. Praying and singing. <laughs> praying and singing. Wow. So I'm asking one question. What kind of song they sing? Are you interested in that? Yeah. You know, whatever they sing, I want to sing too. You know why? It worked. <laughs> <laughs> Say you have a three hundred thousand dollar mortgage, like a chain on your feet, <laughs> and every time you make a decision, you always think about those three thousand dollar of mortgage plus interest. So you didn't say about it, but you always act on this. Like your son wants to have something. Son, no, no. That food is not good. It's by cheaper one. But what's your heart is about the three thousand dollar mortgage on your feet? How about the doctor say something about your physical condition, and boom, you are put on the stock on your feet. Every time you walk around, when you feel something, you say, oh. Am I, am, I, am I dying? You see that? When you are in prison, when you are put in chains, just like Paul and Silas, folks, <laughs> how about if you can just sing a song 
your mortgage will be paid off. I'm not getting this. <laughs> if you just sing a song, your college tuition will be paid off. Oh, come on. If you have seen a song, <laughs> your physical condition will get stronger and stronger. How about that? Amen. Do, do you want to know those songs? Yes. Oh, you are too Christian right now. <laughs> Let me try it. If I preach to the secular people and I say, these two men get into the prison like this, bound and chained, and they just do, did one thing and everything is off of them. The foundation of prison was shaken. They are all like, oh, free. Do you want to be that free? Yeah. Yes. And the secret that they did is they sing a song. Oh, I look at your face, you don't believe it, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what songs they sing? So this is a real story, okay. There was a twenty it's twenty sixteen. It's a ten year old boy was kidnapped. And look at while he was kidnapped by his kidnapper. And look what song he sings, okay? Ten-year-old is abducted from right in front of his home in Atlanta, Georgia, only to be released a few hours later. And you will not believe how he got the kidnapper to let him go. Trace Gallagher knows, Trace. He did it by singing, Megan. It really has become the song heard around the world. The police say it may very well have saved the life of nine-year-old Willie Myrick. Willie says he was in his front yard. He bent down to pick up some money, and that's when someone grabbed him, threw him in their car, and took off. Listen now to nine-year-old Willie Myrick. I didn't know what he was doing until he, like, grabbed me and he drove me off to East Point. He told me he wouldn't hear a word from me, so I didn't say nothing. Oh, he didn't talk. Instead, he started singing a gospel song called Every Praise. Well, he says the man cursed at him, telling him to shut up, but he kept singing for three <laughs> hours until the man finally stopped the car and told him to get out. The boy ran to a nearby home, asked the homeowner to call his guardian. By that time, police were already canvassing the city and quickly picked him up, saying the song saved it. Now, listen to Willie sing the song on a local radio station. Every praise is to our God. Huh. Every word of worship, we're on our core. Every praise, every praise is to our God. He was saying, shut up. Yeah. Everybody's heard of Willie McGrew. My rep even got to meet Hezekiah Walker, the Grammy winner who actually wrote Every Praise. Police still do not have any leads on the suspect. They're hoping. The sketch we showed you earlier might generate some tips in this case. Unbelievable. I love him. I want to know Willie. I want to know Willie. Willie. A song. A song. If you are in prison right now, some of us are in prison. The most difficult prison condition is in our mind. Enemy will not put you in physical prison because he doesn't have to. Enemy can easily put the prison in your mind, my mind. And I have seen parents talk to their kids like, oh, so and so, when they decide to do something. Be careful. If somebody did this and they died. <laughs> Before they even start doing something, already put his mind in there. You know, folks, uh, this is the song this little boy sang. Every praise is to? Oh, no. Every word of worship is one? The oh, core. No. Every praise, every praise is to? Oh, our God. God. Sing hallelujah to? Oh, our God. God. Glory, hallelujah is due? Oh, our God. God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God, my Savior. God, my healer. God, my deliverer. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. The, his captor, this little boy driving, trying to do something, you know, very bad to the boy, but he keeps kept hearing, God my savior, God my healer, God my deliverer. For three hours, then he let him go. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Can we all stand up? I can't finish. I have this is only one third one third of my preaching. I'm not going to you know go over time. Can we stand up?
Next week you come in, yeah. I will tell you exactly what Paul and Sila, I think, said in the prison. You want to learn about it? Yeah. Amen. Yes. And if you learn those songs, you bring those songs back to your family, your life will be transformed. You and your next generation, when you feel anything that's tough or like in prison, there will be a song coming out. That's what I'm going to teach next week. We are learning that from Paul and Sila, mostly from Jesus when they sang the Last Supper. And we're going to learn that from the thousands of years of Jewish history. Amen? So coming next week. But today, uh, uh, I want to hear this one with this song. Are you ready? Come on, let's praise him. It's this original one. Are you ready to praise him? You're in the prison. Put your hands. Come on. Are you ready? Come on. Lord, we give you praise right now. <laughs> it's a book of Philippians. We need a song for our family, for our church. And <laughs> let all the people come. Are you ready? Hallelujah, Lord. <laughs> no matter where you are right now, you are facing situations, finances. Are you ready? Come on. Let's, come on. Lord, give us a song. Come on, guys. Everybody, come on.
Please in this house. Listen to me. Come on. You, when you are singing today, and praise Him, prisoners around you are listening. The family who spoke into your life negatively, they are listening. Come on. Your captor has to let you go every three hours. hours All right. and God's going to break every chance that you have in your life would you stay three hours All right. yes. Yes. the little boy what's his name Willie. Willie. Willie he didn't know how many hours he has to sing but he sang anyway Amen. <laughs> so I'll give you one more chance some of you you put your hands like that You put. I know, I know, you don't feel like it but you exactly what you need today is to change the way you know, the posture you have is change it. Right. You come and humble yourself and say, Lord, I want to be get out the chains in my life. The chains are in our mind. Are you ready to do that one more time? Yeah. And the, the, the prisoners around you are listening. Maybe your dad says something, your mom says something. But it's not them saying that. It's the devil trying to get to your mind, put a bondage on you. Those prisoners need to be set free today. Are you ready? Amen. Anybody need a financial breakthrough? Raise your hand. Come on. Amen. 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 Anybody need to have a breakthrough into college? Raise your hand. Come on. Raise your hand. Yeah? Princeton? I will preach about it next week. Anybody you need a breakthrough into job? Like a new promotion? Increase. I'll, I'll preach about what song they sing. Increase is always a blessing from the Bible. I'm going to put it one more time. One more, one more, one more song, one more point. If you want to have a breakthrough like Paul and Sila, or this little boy, Willie, and want to dance your way into the front or on the sideway, are you ready? All right. Yeah. Last three hours, just three <laughs> minutes. Lord, I pray right now as we dance into the song of Hallel, which I preach about next week, the Hallel songs. You're going to have a breakthrough in us, Lord. The only blessing in those songs is called increase. And I increase the anointing and increase the joy and increase anything that you have intended for us today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And sing until the prisoner listen and agree with you and all the foundation of the chains broken. Are you ready? Come on. All right. New ideas, new promotion. Come on. New finances, come on. A vision. Lord, I pray in this town, Princeton, in Princeton campus, in the name of Jesus, we pray people will come in and sing Haleo and sing to you. People who are in a wheelchair. In the name of, come on. If you are, you want to dance to the front. Come on. Woo. Come on. Dance, come on. Just give him grace. Dance into your victory today. Woo. Yeah. 